Good day and welcome to the Math Salon YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Nimene. Today we'll be looking at the solutions to the Math Salon quiz that we did last Sunday. If you are new to the Math Salon, please, the Math Salon is intended to help students in secondary and high school grow in their mathematical skills. And how do we do that? We organize quizzes every month. When you take the Math Salon quiz, you have the opportunity to be able to watch a solution that comes afterwards, like the one I'm doing today. I expect that the students themselves, after having taken the quiz and they watch the solution, can estimate how much they have learned. This way, we either re-enkindle skills that you had forgotten or ignite new ones that you never knew before. This way, you grow in a way that makes you better prepare for your class and national exams. So, the way I've tried to solve here, we'll be looking at the questions that we did, that this will not be the only solution. The solutions I give here are the ones I think best impact the mathematical skill that I expect for the different classes. In this case, we'll be looking at advanced level. That would have been what I would have expected the students to do. There are many other ways that you could have solved the problem to get to the answer. But these ones are the ones I chose because they stimulate the skill I want you to, to learn or re enkindle if you have forgotten. I would also not rewrite all the questions every time. I will just put the important data for the question and then go ahead to solve. So it's important that you don't look only at the solution, but you get a chance also to look at the quiz itself, the original quiz. There are many other videos within the Math Salon that solve so many aspects, so sometimes I might defer you to those videos. So the first question that we had in that quiz of Sunday was, we we're given the question 2 to the power A is equal to 3 to the power B, and that A plus B is equal to 1. You were asked to look for A. When you have such an equation, which is an exponential equation like this, where the bases are different, it's always important to think about introducing logarithm. We can always move from exponential and transform to logs, as well as move from the logarithm to exponential. There are so many videos within the Maths Alone YouTube channel where I explain in much of that. Here, so I will try to move ahead. So to do that here, I will try to take the log of both sides. This is 2a is equal to the log of 3 to the power b. From your earlier stages of logarithms, you had learned that if, for example, I have log a to the power n, then this is n log a. So the power can actually come in front. So it means I can write this as a log 2 is equal to b log 3, which is good. I've been asked to look for a. So somehow I have to make sure that this b goes away, does not just disappear, but converts itself mathematically. There was extra information that I was given. I was told A plus B is equal to 1. So if I don't want B here, I will make B here the subject. By taking A this way, it becomes minus A and substitute it here. Then I get A log 2 is equal to, in the place of B, I have now 1 minus A. 1 minus A log 3. If I arrange this well, I take it to, to the saloon to fix it. Then I will get log 3 times that is log 3. Log 3 times a is minus a log 3. I can take the minus a log 3 to this side so that they are similar because there's a log a, a log here. So I can then I have a log 2 plus a log 3, and this is equal to log 3, right? Because this one has moved to that side. a is common here, so I can factorize it out. And I get a into brackets log of 2 plus log of 3. You should know that when we don't write a base under the log, it means it's base 10. The mathematics well understands that. So it means there's a base 10 here. Look at this here. You would have also learned in the past that log A plus log B is equal to log AB. So it means I can combine this together as a product. This way, I get here that will be my log. A is outside. 2 times 3 is equal to log 3. And this is A log 6 is equal to log 3. I can divide both sides by log 6 because that will be different from 0. And A will be equal to log 3 on log 6. But if you check through the answers, you would not find something like this. So there was a change of log. So this was supposed to be given as log 3 to the base 6. 
You would have also learned in the past that if I have lock A to the base B, then I can also write this as lock A to the base C divided by lock B to the base C. So if I have a base, I can actually move this way. So I move from here to this side. That's what I did. So if you did that well, then your answer was supposed to be C. For question number two, that was question number two. You are given information, you were told that given this equation, that this equation had roots theta and gamma. And then you were told to look for C prime in another equation that's written as A prime X squared plus B prime X plus C prime equal to zero, which had roots theta plus one over theta, gamma plus one over gamma. That was the equation. So we're supposed to look for C prime. That's what we needed. In order to solve this, it's important to know. So if I'm given an equation of the form, ax squared minus bx plus c is equal to zero with root theta. On gamma, there's some important properties we can get there. If you look at the standard quadratic equation formula, it is as a squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. And with this, you're always told that the sum of the roots is equal to minus b on a, and the product of the root is equal to c on a. So I will try to apply the idea here. Notice that here in this equation it is minus b. So my sum of roots, which will be theta plus gamma, because the two roots for this equation were given as theta and gamma, should be equal to minus the coefficient of x there, which is minus b, divided by the coefficient of x squared, which is a. And this gives me b on a, because minus times minus is plus. And then if I look at the product of roots, theta, gamma, that is C divided by A. Here there was no problem. This information I know from that first equation. I'm supposed to be able to use that information to look for this C prime here. If you remember also from your previous knowledge that if you are given roots of an equation as alpha and beta, then you can form the equation based on the roots. I've shown in many other videos why these are called roots and how you can move from the roots to get the tree, which is the equation itself. So this will be x squared minus the sum of the roots, x plus the product of the roots equal to zero. So if you are given two roots, you can actually come up with the equation. It means that the C prime here has something to do with the product of the roots. So I will try to look at the product of these roots in order to be able to look for what this coefficient would be. And if you look at it well, this would be in such a way that this is C on A. So when I come out with a ratio, the top will be C prime and the denominator will be A prime. Because this is for an equation where the coefficient of this is 1. With the equation that is given there, the coefficient is not 1, it is A prime. So it means I would have just have divided just as I can also multiply all through. So let's now go on to our work. So my sum of roots for this new equation is summing this up. This is theta plus 1 over theta plus gamma, plus 1 over gamma. But I'm not really interested in the sum of roots. I'm interested in the product of roots because this is what would help me. So my product of roots would be theta plus 1 over theta multiplied by gamma plus 1 over gamma. If you multiply this out, then this is theta times gamma, this is theta gamma, theta times 1 over gamma, this is 1 over theta over gamma, 1 over theta times gamma is gamma all over theta. And this multiplied by this is 1 over theta gamma. Theta and gamma, theta and gamma, all that information I have from here. Because I'm told theta multiplied by gamma is C on A. So this, this term and this, I already have information. What I have to fix is, is the middle part. So this is here, theta gamma plus 1 over theta gamma. Just these two that I know, and I keep what I don't know to the end. I can look for the a factor for these two, and what is the most important is to just take the product. So that would be something like all over theta gamma. Just multiply the two, that's the easiest way. So theta gamma divided by gamma is theta. Theta times theta is theta squared. Plus theta gamma divided by theta is gamma. Gamma times gamma is gamma squared. So it, it simplifies to something like that. So I know this, I know this, I know this, but I don't know this here. So this theta squared plus gamma squared, I don't have. I only know theta plus gamma. 
the not theta squared plus gamma squared. But we can play around to come up with that. I've also shown in many other videos that you can check to see that a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If I take this on this other side, it means I can write this as a plus b, all that squared minus 2ab is equal to a squared plus b squared. That's the idea we will use here. So here I can write this as theta gamma plus 1 over theta gamma plus on top I will write this as theta plus gamma squared minus 2 theta gamma all over theta gamma. Yeah, that's the idea. If you have this, you can express it into this form. Theta plus gamma squared minus 2 theta gamma. I have now all the information I need. My ingredients are ready. I'm just to put it inside and make whatever meal I like. So this way, my that is C on A. This is 1 divided by C on A. You invert the come A on C. Plus, here, that is B on A. So this becomes B squared on A squared minus... 2ac, that is 2c divided by a, divided by c on a. If you write this well, I also, def yeah, if you want to look for that, just the product of a and c, and I'm going to have it ac, ac divided by a is cc times cc is c squared. And if you do that here, you get a squared. Plus, I'm dividing my fraction. I can multiply by the inverted version of that. Then I'm going to get here b squared on a squared times a on c minus 2ca times a on c. a here, remove one of this. And I get your b squared on ac. So here I get c squared plus a squared all over ac is equal plus b squared on ac minus 2. This c cancels, this a cancels. To put them to a common denominator here, this will be c squared plus a squared plus b squared minus 2ac all that divided by ac so you see so if you compare this to a form of the equation that would be this way then that means a prime will be under c prime and therefore my numerator here is my c prime and the denominator is a prime so c prime was supposed to be c squared plus a squared plus b squared minus 2ac and that was the letter C there. The next question, question number three said, if A is greater than one, and the integral of this is equal to eight, or nine on eight, and the integral from one to A of x squared minus one, x squared plus one divided by x cubed dx is equal to nine on eight, find A. That was what the equation required there. So this was the information given for that question number three, and you were supposed to look for a given this. a is greater than 1. This integral, we have to do that. This is the integration of a rational function. So I have a polynomial on top and a polynomial below there. So from that to that, I can make this as a single function if I expand. This is just the difference of two squares. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth power. x squared times that is plus x squared. And this is minus x squared. The fall of minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. So actually that can be simplified to this form. Just making sure we arrange it for take to a saloon. So I have to look for this integral and later then equate it to 9 on 8 and solve for A. So if you have a polynomial and you have to integrate, what's important is check first the degree of your numerator and the degree of the denominator. If the degree of the numerator is smaller than, is bigger than that of the denominator, then you need first to divide. There are several techniques of doing that. We will do Euclidean and long, div long division here so that if you're forgotten, at least you can see this as a reminder. So to do that, I'm going to do this. Do what we did also in secondary school. So this, I want to do this division. So x to the fourth power divided by x to the third power is 1x. x times that is x to the power 4. We subtract this. This minus that falls off. Minus 1 minus nothing is minus 1. So I get minus 1. I can't divide anymore. So which means my answer now is written as x minus 1 divided by x cubed. It's the same thing you would do if you had something like 5 divided by 3. 5 divided by 3 goes 1 time. 1 times 3 is 3. You subtract 2. 2 cannot divide 3 anymore. So your answer is 1 plus 2 on 3. 
So you normally one remainder two, but this is how you write it because this way you get back the original information. That's just what we've done here as well. So if that is true, then my this integral just reduces to this one. So then this is integral from one to a x minus one over x cube dx. This is a simple integral to do. If you integrate this well, then this is going to be x here squared on two minus x to the minus two dx. So actually, what you what would have happened here is that. So you can play around with it. So this is x to the minus 3. You increase the power by 1. That goes to minus 2. You divide by that. But this cancels. This goes away with that. There is no dx anymore. Because this now is supposed to be from 1 to a. So if we arrange this well. Then you are going to see that this gives us here. a to the power 2 on 2. Plus here. I would write this as 1 all over. So then it's easy for me. Then this is 1 over 2a squared minus the lower limit this is half minus half if you arrange this well this minus half minus half minus one so this is here a squared on two plus one over two a squared minus one but we are told that this is supposed to be equal to eight or nine so I'll just come above here right nicely so a squared on two plus one over two a squared Minus 1 is equal to 9 on 8. If I multiply all through by 8, the 8 multiplied by this will give me 4a squared. 8 here will give me 4 on top, all over a squared. Minus 8 is equal to 9. You can take this this way, minus 8 this way makes that 17. So 4a squared plus 4 all over a squared is equal to 17. You can multiply all through by a squared. A squared multiplied by that gives me 4a to the power 4 plus 4 is equal to 17a squared. I will arrange this in such a way that I get a polynomial in a. So 4a squared minus 17a squared, sorry, to the fourth, 17 squared plus 4 is equal to 0. You can actually play out the fact, you can factorize this in terms of a squared. So if I factorize, I'll get something like 4a squared and a squared, I have to look for two factors of this, that when I cross multiply, I should get minus 17. So I should normally get something like, like 1 and 4. But 4 times this is 16, and that is that, that's, you get 17, but that's positive 17. I want negative 17. So I put minus 1 and minus 4. Because minus 1 times minus 4 is still 4. So if I cross multiply that, I will get minus 16 a squared, minus a squared that gives me so i have two factors here so my two factors are 4 a squared minus 1 a squared minus 4 equal to 0. if two numbers multiply to give 0 it means either this is 0 or this is 0. so from here this will mean a squared will be equal to 1 quarter or a squared will be equal to 4. we are told a is greater than 1 so you cannot square a if it's greater than 1 and you get 1 quarter so this is not a possible solution here, A can be 2 or minus 2. And since A is greater than 1, it means it can only be equal to 2. So A was 2. And if you checked among the answers, you would not have seen any A that was 2. So E was the correct one.